So let's take a breath together as we just move into this last Sunday of September. That's unbelievable that we are finishing up our theme for the month of the Great Awakening, the Great Awakening. You know, Ernest Holmes says now is the time for us to come awake out of sleep. And that's what we've been talking about all month. It's time for us to come awake out of sleep. And this is the time of the Great Awakening. Just waking up from a belief in a life apart from God. And that's what we talk about every week in one way or another. That's what we're looking at in our spiritual practice. One way or another is, is healing our sense of separation from God, which is the only thing that ever needs to be healed. And so we, 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 we call that healing that happens as a part of, uh, or as a result of our great awakening. We awaken in so many different ways and in so many different areas of our lives. And so today the theme is, the topic is on a clear day, on a clear day, on a clear day. And whenever I hear that topic or, the, or, or, or that phrase on a clear day, I think of the song on a clear day. And that song has been around forever. It's been around a long, long time. I'm sure we've all heard it. But I just really began to think about how profound the words of the song are. On a clear day, rise and look around you and you'll see who you are. On a clear day, how it will astound you that the glow of your being outshines any star. You'll feel part of every mountain, sea, and shore, and you'll hear from far and near a world you've never heard before. But on that clear day, on that clear day, you can see forever and ever and evermore. And when I think about on a clear day and, and the words to that, it, as I said, profound words, on a clear day, rise and look around you and you can see who you are. And you know, ordinarily we think of, of, of a clear day as something that's outside ourselves when we're looking out. And it, it is a clear day when we can look out and there are no clouds, there are no obstructions, there are no, there, there, there's no fog, there's no smoke, there's no, anything that would obstruct our view. There are no clouds, as I said, no clouds or anything. And we just get a chance to see the beauty. And it does seem that we can see forever. That's what happens on a clear day. But you know, every day is a new day and every day is an opportunity for us to see a clear day and for us to have a clear day. It's our choice, how clear our day is gonna be, how unobstructed we are going to be, how we're, going, how, 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 how we're gonna make ourselves available to experience a clear day because the clarity, the clarity comes from within us. The clarity comes from our own consciousness. The clarity comes from our willingness to be available, to let go of those things that would obstruct, those things that would block, those things that would hinder, those things that would encumber in any way, the clarity that we have. And so I invite you to just really think about that today, that we have a choice about the day that we're gonna have. Every day, we have a choice to let this be a clear day. Let me be clear this day. Let my consciousness be clear this day. We have that choice. And so I invite you to just really think about that. Just really think about having a clear, unobstructed day. I remind you, let's take a breath again. That's one of the best ways to have a clear day is to get started with taking a breath and just letting go of whatever we may be holding, taking a breath that, that reminds us to return to center. But when we start to think about what's happening in the world today, I'm inviting you to recognize that the seatbelt lights are on, the seatbelt light is on, the seatbelt light is on already because we are approaching turbulence. We are approaching turbulence right now from now to the end of the year and maybe beyond, but particularly these next 30 to 40 days that we're going through, we are approaching a lot of turbulence. The seatbelt light is on, fasten yours. Fasten your seatbelts. I've been saying that for months. Fasten your seatbelts. And now it is very, very important for us to keep those seatbelts fastened as we move through this time. And you know, the, 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 the ways that, that the, the seatbelts help us is to have that clear day that I'm talking about, to experience that clear day, to rise and look around us and, and see who we are. 
to rise and look around us and know who we are. And so the ways that I'm, 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 I'm suggesting to you today to have a clear day, starting out with just staying anchored in the truth. That's the first thing, staying anchored in the truth. Stay anchored in the truth. There's a lot of, of, of stuff going on, as I said before. We, live, we know the truth and we live in a world of facts. We know the truth and we live in a world of facts. Sometimes real facts, sometimes alternative facts but we live in a world of facts. And so recognizing that because we do live in the world of facts, behind all that is the truth. Behind all that is the truth. And that's what we wanna stay anchored in. We wanna stay anchored in the truth. We can't, because we live in a world of facts, we can't always ignore the facts because the facts are in our face. We're living through them. We're living through them. And sometimes the facts can be really har harmful. Sometimes the facts can be really painful. Sometimes the facts can be really anxiety producing. Sometimes the facts can be really scary, really scary, really scary. And the truth that we know behind all that is that God is in the midst of everything that's going on. That's what we have to keep in mind, that God is in the midst of everything that's going on. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter how it's impacting us. The truth remains the same, that God is in the midst of what's going on with us. That, that, and, and, and keeping that in mind helps us to walk through this world of facts, helps us to move through this time, knowing that we're not moving through this time alone, knowing that we there's always that power, there's always that presence that is, that is right where we are. There's never a spot where God is not. And so keeping that in mind and, 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 and tethering ourselves to that, aligning ourselves with that, with, with that presence, aligning ourselves with that, that 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 source of our being is how we can remain clear, how we can remain clear even in the face of facts, even in the in in in, in what appears to be the reality of facts, and you know on the on the human level they're real, but you know on 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 the universal level, on the spiritual level, the only thing that's real is God. The only thing that's real is God. And we have to keep that in mind as we walk through this time. And that's what the seatbelts do for us, the, our spiritual seatbelts. That's what happens as we move through this turbulence. Because what we're doing when we're moving through the turbulence, when we fasten that seatbelt, you know, when we're moving through it, we're trying to get to higher ground. We're trying to get to higher ground. We're trying to get to higher ground. We're trying to get to a higher place, rising above the turbulence, rising above, above the clouds, rising above all the stuff that's going on, Rise, rising above the craziness, rising above the division, the divisiveness, rising above the, 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 the unrest, all the things that are going on right now. We wanna rise above that, rise above that. Because when we get above that, when we get above the turbulence, that's when, we, that's when we can see the clear day and that's when we are clear. That's when we are experiencing the clear day, when we are, when we are at that high, higher ground, you know, clarity, Clarity is, is an example of clarity, and clarity is a, is, is a spiritual is a spiritual quality that that we're always seeking. We're always seeking clarity within ourselves, and and clarity, uh, an example of that is is the clear air that's at the at at the top of a mountain, the clear air that's at the top of a mountain. Well, that same clear air that's above the clouds when we're on a plane is, is what clarity is like. And that's what we're always seeking, but we have to rise. We have to rise above in order to get to that clarity. We have to rise above in order to get to that place of being clear. And so as we do our spiritual practice, as we go through the facts, however painful they may be, however disturbing they may be, it may be a diagnosis, it may be the loss of a loved one, it may be, be a loss of a job, it may be financial difficulties, whatever the case may be, those are facts. But what one, one thing we know for sure, God is more than this. God is bigger than any fact that we can, that we can come up with, any fact that can occur. God is, is, is more and God is bigger than any politician. God is bigger than any event. God is bigger than any pandemic. God is bigger than anything that's going on. That's what we wanna keep in mind. And those are the affirmations that we wanna use. I'm gonna be recommending affirmations to you throughout this time today, because that's one of our seven sacred practices is using affirmations. 
speaking words of truth, speaking words of truth, speaking words of truth until they become a part of who we are, speaking words of truth until they become a part of our lives, speaking words of truth until they become beliefs for us, something that we can really believe. So speaking the word of truth that God is all there is, that God is bigger than whatever this is that's going on. God is bigger than any facts. God is so much more. God is so much more than any of this. And that's what we always have to keep in mind. So those are the kinds of things that, that can anchor us in our spiritual practice. So I'm inviting you this, this week to start to use affirmations. We're always using affirmations. We are all, everything we say, every statement that we make is an affirmation of some kind, but making sure that we are consciously using affirmations. We are consciously using affirmations of those things that we want to experience in our lives. The things we want to experience are the ones that we, that we want to use over and over and over again. So making sure that what you are saying, what you are saying, what you are affirming is what you want to experience and, and, and what you want to believe. If, if you are, uh, are feeling some doubt or some, some, some concerns and don't feel quite as anchored as you'd like to feel, start to use your affirmation. Start to affirm that God is all there is. God is right here, right now, right where I am. There is not a spot where God is not. There's not a spot where God is not. I am always surrounded by the presence of God. I'm always surrounded by the love of God. I'm always, always guided by God. And so when we can keep those, those those affirmations in mind and keep and, and keep stating them over and over and over again. It keeps us anchored in the truth that we know. It keeps us anchored in the truth that we know rather than in the facts that we see, rather than in the facts that we see because those things change all the time. The truth that we know never changes. It never changes. And so when we start with the, when we start with the facts, then the facts become the constant. When we start with what's going on and start talking about the things that are going on in the news and the election that's coming up and the this that happened and the and the that that he said and 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 whatever she did, all those things. When we start that, then we're starting there with the problem. We're starting there with the facts, and we make them the constant because we constantly talk about them. We constantly are dealing with them. We're constantly worrying about them. We're constantly agonizing over. Them. And when we're doing that, that becomes the constant. The, the problem becomes the constant. Facts become the constant. And God becomes the variable. God becomes the variable. What we want to do is to bring, bring it back to what we know to be true, that God is all there is. And when we do that, then God becomes the constant. God becomes the constant. And the facts become the variables. Because, you know, facts change all the time. Facts change every day. They, they change moment by moment. All you got to do is turn your TV on and just see what the, next, the facts are for the day, the facts are for the hour. There's always breaking news about something. There's always breaking news about something every hour, it seems. Those are facts that keep changing. God is, is right here, right now, always present, always the same, never changing. And so that's what we want to be anchored in. That's what we want to be anchored in. And so use those affirmations to keep you anchored in the truth that you know. The second thing I'd like to recommend that you do is take a breath right now. But the second thing I'd like to recommend that you do is live in the expectancy of good. Live in the expectancy of good. The expectancy of good. Expectancy is anticipation. Expectancy is, is openness and, and, and it has some excitement to it. Expectancy, you know, I have always called the big and. The big and. Expectancy, the big and. You know, last week when Reverend Sally was here, she said, we get what we expect. We get what we expect. And you know, I, I, I heard her say that and I went, yeah, that's right. I know that, but that's right. We, we get what we expect. And, and I moved on to the next thing. And then yesterday I had a chance to experience that. Yesterday, my daughter called me and told me that she had discovered and what she had ordered after she discovered this uh, wonderful pour over coffee maker. And it was the best thing since sliced bread. She just could not, she couldn't believe how wonderful the coffee was that she was making in this pour over coffee maker. We used to have pour over coffee makers a long time ago and I didn't remember them being that good, but she carried on so about them that I decided that there was no way that I could let nightfall come without having a pour over coffee maker. 
So I ordered one and it was supposed to be delivered to my house before six o'clock or by six o'clock. And so I was, I was kind of waiting for it to come because I couldn't wait for this poor of a coffee baker to come. And 6.30 got here and it still wasn't here. I checked my email and I found out that it had been delivered and they showed a picture of the of, of the delivery where it had been left because I have I have specific instructions to deliver only to my front door, and so it was, the picture that they took was not at my front door. There was there was a door that was not mine, and so I was so so disappointed. So I called the company to tell them that my package was misdelivered, that it did not get here by six o'clock. Didn't get here at all because it had been misdelivered. The problem with that is that, the, the, well, the backstory of that is that I have dealt with this company, well, forever, but, but for the last four or five months, there have been a lot of misdeliveries. They, they, I've, I've asked that things be delivered to my door. They deliver them to the mail room. I, I, then I call them and they give me a refund. And then I ask that they be delivered to my door. And then they wrote on my account uh, what the delivery instructions were. Now they write it right on the shipping label. And, and, the, and the delivery people still take them to the mailroom. And so the, for the last two weeks, because I've complained so much, they've started to bring them to my door. And yesterday I was wanting this coffee pot, this coffee maker, of course, that was gonna change my life before morning. So I, I was really expecting as, as I was typing in the, the order, I was thinking, I can't wait to get this coffee maker, but I was also thinking, you know what, they're probably going to misdeliver. They're probably going to take it to the mail room or they're going to take it someplace else. And of course they did. So not only did they didn't take it to the mail room, but they took it to another apartment. But as it turns out, I was, I called the company, I was carrying on about how tired I am of dealing with the misdelivering things. And the, the young man on the phone was so nice. And I have to always tell people that, you know, this I'm, don't take this personally. I'm just aggravated right now. So I carried on so about it. There was nothing he could do about it except wait until the tracer happens. And I said, well, just cancel the order. And then I thought, no, don't cancel the order because if they cancel it and I get it and they have a tracer on it, then I got to go out and send it back. And so I just decided, okay, I'm not going to deal with it anymore. Just leave it, let it be. And I got off the phone, as soon, as soon as I hung up the phone, there was a knock at my door. And I knew that the person who had the package was delivering it to me. And I went to the door and sure enough, there was my package. And I brought it in, I was feeling sort of sheepish about it because the realization came to me that Reverend Sally said, you get what you expect. I expected them to misdeliver that package. How could they not? misdeliver it. As I was typing in the order, I'm thinking they're, gonna miss, they, they're not going to bring this to the right place. They're not going to bring it to my door. They're going to take it to the mail room. So how could it be any other way? How could it be any other way? I was expecting them to misdeliver and they did. They lived up to my expectations. And I had to walk around and chuckle uh, at myself thinking, you know what? I don't care how much we know, our knowing is always showing. Because we can't just know for a moment. We can't just know sometimes and then forget other times. That's why it's important for us to always be present, always be mindful, always be aware of what we are thinking, what we are feeling, being fully present as we're doing everything because everything affects everything. I'm sitting here putting out, putting it in an order, wanting them to deliver it to me, thinking they're going to misdeliver it. There was no way for them to do anything but misdeliver it. So I expected them to misdeliver and they did. And that's when I began to think, you know what? I know better than to deal with expectations. Expectations are, are, are based on the past. The expectations are based on past performance. The thing that I wanted was expectancy. I wanted to order that with an expectancy of good. I wanted to order that with an expectancy that it would be delivered to my door. Ernest Holmes says we have to do our work in, in, in quiet expectancy and in, and, and in calm confidence. We have to do our work. It is up to us to do our work in quiet expectancy, quiet expectancy. And I'm thinking of, uh, uh, of something else, the joy that I could have experienced getting that 
that that that coffee maker last night because Ernest Holmes defines joy as the emotion excited by 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 by, by the expectancy of good. Joy is the emotion excited by the expectancy of good. I could have experienced joy if I had expected good, if I had had an expectancy of good of that, of that coffee maker being delivered to me last night with, without any drama about it. But I didn't do that. I didn't have the calm confidence that the, that the coffee maker was coming to me. I was expecting it to be misdelivered and it was. So I'm inviting you I'm inviting you to live in an expectancy of good. Always have an expectancy of good, anticipating good, anticipating the very best to happen. Anticipating good always, that's what we wanna do. We wanna be in that place of expectancy, of excitement, of yes, I know good is happening. I may not even know what it is, I just know it's happening. I know it's coming, I know it's here. I know it's gonna be revealed to me at any moment. And so that's where we wanna be in our lives, live in an expectancy of good as much as you possibly can live in an expectancy of good. Live in an expectancy of good. But in order to do that, you gotta be mindful of what you're thinking. You gotta be mindful of what you're saying. You gotta be mindful of what you're expecting. Because if you are expecting, if you are expecting, if you are expecting something to go wrong, it will. The law always says yes. The universe always says yes. If you are expecting, I know they aren't going to deliver it right. I know that this person isn't going to do that. The universe always says yes. It doesn't have a sense of humor. You can't joke. You can't say it lightly. You got to say what you mean and mean what you say and know what you're doing at all times. And so live in an expectancy of good. Always expect good. Good is all around us. And it is just being wait, it is just waiting to be revealed in and through our lives. But there has to be an opening for it. We have to be clear. This is how we get to experience a clear day as we walk through our lives, living in an expectancy of good. And then finally, as we take a breath here, I'd like us to keep the faith by tuning up every day, giving ourselves a tune-up throughout the day. Keep the faith by giving ourselves a tune-up throughout the day. And using those affirmations as your tune-up mechanism. Using affirmations as your tune-up mechanism. Using affirmations, create your own affirmations. God is all there is. That's always the best. God is always it, all, all there is. I know that God is right here, right now, right where I am. I know that God is right here, right now, right where I am. I know that God is so much more than this. God is so much more than this. I am more than this. I am more than this. And then going even further and saying, all of my needs are being met in each and every moment of each and every day. All of my needs are being met in each and every moment of each and every day. All of my needs are being met right here and right now. Right here and right now. Things are always working out for me. Things are always working out for me. Things are always working out for me. You know, you can just walk around and just around your house and just sing that. Things are always working out for me. You don't have to wonder about it. Things are always working out for me. Things are always working out for me. And you know, if you say that over and over and over again, it just sort of lifts your spirit. Things are always working out for me, no matter what it is that's happening. No matter what it is that's happening, no matter what the facts are, things are always working out for me. Things are always working out for me. And the more you say that, the more excited you become. The more you say that, the more you can feel yourself moving through the turbulence. The more you say that, the more you can feel yourself rising above the clouds. The more you say that, things are always working out for me. And saying it like you mean it, saying it like you know it, saying it like you know it, things are always working out for me. Guess what? Things are always working out for you. Things are always working out for you. Things are always working out for you. I know that God is always guiding, guarding, directing, and protecting me. God is always guiding, guarding, directing, and protecting me. Let's say that again. God is always guiding, guarding, directing, and protecting me. Wherever I am, 
whatever I'm doing, whatever the situation may be, whatever the news may say, whatever doomsday predictions there may be, whatever is going on, God is always guiding, guarding, directing, and protecting me. God is always guiding, guarding, directing, and protecting me. But God is always right where I am. God is always right where I am. There's nothing that can change that. There's nothing that can change that. There is no thing that can change that. There's no person that can change that. There's no situation that can change that. There's no event that can change that. God is always right where I am. God is always guiding me. God is always guarding me. God is always, always, always directing me. God is always protecting me. This is what I know to be the truth. This is what I know to be the truth. Have those conversations with yourself. Use those affirmations for yourself and create your own. Create your own and, 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 and continue to use them over and over and over again and feel the clouds lifting, feel the, 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 the mugginess lifting, feel the fog lifting, feel the clarity coming, feel yourself a, a, arriving at that mountaintop, that clarity, that purity of air, that clear day that's at, that, 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 that's at the top of the mountain. Feel yourself getting there and the deeper we go in our spiritual practice, the deeper we go in spirit, the deeper we go in, 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 in knowing the truth and anchoring into that truth that we know, the higher we rise. The deeper we go, the higher we rise. Isn't that amazing how that works? The deeper we go, the higher we rise. And the higher we rise, the clearer our days become. And so I invite you to know that on a clear day, on a clear day, you can see forever. On a clear day, you can see forever because you know that forever is eternity. That forever is, is that which is eternal. And on a clear day, we can see that which is eternal. We can see that. We can experience that which is eternal because that is our very life. That which is eternal, that which, which always is that which always is. And this isness has, 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 has maintained throughout time. This isness just is. God is. God always is. God always is. And whether we call it past, present, or future, God just is. God just is because there is no time in God. God just is in this eternal moment of now. And so in this eternal moment of now, I invite you to take a breath and breathe in that e isness that is God. It clarifies you. It clears you up. Be anchored in that. Be anchored in that and have a clear day. Let every day be a clear day. Let every moment of your life be a clear day. Let's take a breath together as we turn within for prayer. Hmm. Just breathing into this place of knowing God's presence. Just breathing into this place of knowing that there's but one life. Just breathing into this place of knowing but there's but one breath, there's but one activity, there's but one mind. That one is God. That one life is God's life. That one life is my life right here and right now. That one life is a life of each of us right here and right now. That one life lives and moves and has its being in me. That one life lives and moves and has its being in each of us. That one life is that within which we live and we move and we have our being. There's nothing that can separate me from God. Nothing that can separate me from God because I'm made in God's image and likeness and out of God itself. And so there's nothing to separate me. This I'm clear about. This I know to be the truth. And so it is from this place of awareness, this place of truth. I speak this word for each of us this day, knowing that this is a clear day for each one of us. We are clear in our awareness of the presence of God in our midst, knowing that God is always right where we are. That no matter what's going on in our lives, God is in the midst of everything that's going on. And so there's healing happening on every level of our being. Healing happening in our body temples and every organ, cell, tissue function of our bodies, the healing is happening. There's healing happening in our, our, our bodies of affairs and our financial affairs. 
releasing any sense of lack and limitation and opening up to the abundance that is God itself. That God is always raining manna from heaven upon all of us, always. The cattle on a thousand hills belong to us and we are claiming it right here and right now by the word that's being spoken. That every need is being met in each and every moment because I know that God shows up as a thing needed itself, as a thing itself. God is showing up. God is showing up. And so I know that as we walk forward through this time, God guides us, directs us, uplifts us, protects us. We walk in safety and protection wherever we go, whatever we do. And so I know that a mighty blessing, a mighty blessing is being rained on all of us right here and right now. This word goes out to anyone needing a blessing, needing a healing, needing a prayer this day. All those who are affected by COVID-19, all those who are affected by unrest, all those who are affected by the loss of a loved one or by physical, physical illness or, or, or disabilities themselves, all those who are affected by fires and natural disasters of any kind, loss of any kind. I know that God is in the midst. God is in the midst. I know that God is bigger than anything that's being experienced right here and right now. And that healing is happening everywhere. Everywhere healing is happening. Healing is happening everywhere. And so as I open this circle of prayer, I'll just pause momentarily so that you may speak the names of anyone you'd like held in prayer. You may speak their names silently aloud and you may speak them now. And so for all those whose names were spoken here this day, I know that God is right where each of them is, blessing and keeping them. I know that all indeed as well as this prayer goes out everywhere, touching everywhere, knowing that there's peace everywhere, knowing that there's love everywhere, knowing that there's harmony everywhere, knowing that there's healing everywhere, because I know that there's God everywhere, everywhere. This is a clear day. This is the truth that I know. And I give great, great thanks for it. I release this word now knowing that all indeed is well, knowing that it does not return void, knowing that there's a, the perfect manifestation of the word that I give thanks for right here and right now. And so I just simply say again, thank you, Father, Mother, God. Thank you, infinite presence. Thank you, divine mother. I simply allow it to be. I allow it to be, and so it is.